Finally, we see Hackett and this Broncos regime actually live up to something they constantly preach, which is accountability. How many times have we heard that this season? Well, after Melvin Gordon's fifth fumble of the season on Sunday against the Raiders at another opportune time as well, the Broncos have moved on from their veteran running back. As Ian Rappaport broke the news today that Melvin Gordon has been waived I don't know if he'll get claimed by anyone. I sort of get Cody Parkey. Remember him? He was the kicker for the Bears, the double doink. I get Cody Parkey vibes that if you want to pick up Melvin Gordon, he's probably better than your third string running back. But you also are really running with uh, flying close to the sun of he might ultimately cost you the game if another inopportune fumble comes around here. But Melvin Gordon's season with the Broncos and his career most likely too comes to a comes to a close, 90 carries this year, 318 yards, two touchdowns, and five fumbles. Two and a half seasons with the Broncos, double-digit fumbles in his career with Denver, and ultimately, that was his downfall for someone that's a very talented back when not fumbling the rock, and also is a, a, a part of the locker room, is a voice, is a leader of this team. But what's crazy now is we look at this depth chart, and whoever would have imagined that midway through the season, the Broncos running back room would have three starters on it, three guys on it, who were not on the team to start the season. Latavius Murray came over from New Orleans off a practice squad, uh, practice squad uh, signing. Same for Marlon Mack came, coming over from San Francisco. And then Chase Edmonds, who comes over from Miami in the Bradley Chubb trade after... Sorry, I'm watching the U.S. game. They're about to score. Okay, we're back on track right now. All right, Chase Edmonds came over in the Bradley Chubb trade, and he got nicked up, and with a high ankle sprain, he is reportedly going to miss the next couple of weeks. Mike Boone is on short-term IR right now. He could be activated coming off a high ankle sprain of his own. But like Adam Schefter pointed out, Broncos running back Chase Edmonds suffered a high ankle sprain Sunday and now is expected to miss a few weeks. I mean... It is a bold move for Peyton, I will admit, to cut a running back when you just lost another running back in injury and you're already extremely thin. The Broncos are one of five teams that have not had a 100-yard rusher once this season. And they're not even close, too. A lot of other teams have had like a 90-yard guy, right? And they just couldn't. They got a running back by committee, sort of like the Bills, for example. But no. No one's even close to getting to 100 yards once this season for Denver. But meet your new starting running back, Latavius Murray. And I don't really know why he wasn't getting more reps. I, is four fumbles not enough for Hackett? Did he have to wait for number five to come, especially at the goal line for the second time this season? And what really pissed me off, too, was Melvin Gordon owned up to it. He said he felt sick after that, and he knew that it was a... Very bad thing to happen to him, especially for a fifth time. But he also said, hey, I didn't feel like that cost us the game because we recovered the fumble. Uh, you know what, what could have happened, Melvin? You could have scored a touchdown instead of fumbling, and that would have been the difference maker for the Broncos. But what is your one-word reaction to Melvin Gordon getting cut? We're also going to talk about Nathaniel Hackett and how he might be closer to being done that maybe we're all uh, expecting at this point. But what is your one-word reaction first to Gordon getting cut? For me, it's hallelujah. Because this had to happen. There is just no way you can preach accountability, Hackett, and keep a player who has fumbled five times in ten games. That's just unacceptable. It is. This is the NFL. This is a professional business. If you are that bad at your job... You're going to be out of a job. Next up on the show, Nathaniel Hackett. Is he closer to getting fired after this loss to the Raiders? Or at this point, is it, we all know he's going to get fired. So what does one more loss really mean? It's not like things could get any worse for Hackett. Some think so. I believe this loss definitely gets him closer to getting canned. But Turkey Day is just a couple of days away. And I would love to get to 11,000 subscribers by that time. So the season of giving, if you want to be thankful for your favorite Broncos YouTuber right here, for getting you guys daily content, make sure to subscribe. Less than 400 to go. I know there are 400 of you watching who have not subscribed. 
please consider doing so so that we can get you guys more Broncos YouTube content. So on the other side of the coin of Hackett, is he close to getting fired? Well, Pat McAfee has Ian Rappaport on his live show every so often, kind of a standing reservation. And Rap Sheet on it said, I would be really surprised if Nathaniel Hackett got fired during the season. We'll see how it ends, but it hasn't been great in Denver. So a bit surprising because for him to say he'd be really surprised definitely is not what I expected to hear out of Rappaport when we're talking about a 3-7 and seven Broncos team that's the most underwhelming team in franchise history. But I want to share this tweet with you guys here. Benjamin Albright, who I think is probably the most well-tapped-in source for the Broncos when it comes to stuff like this, after the game yesterday, saying Dom Capers as interim head coach, as interim head uh, watch, has it, Capers as interim head coach watch has started. There it is. Sorry, I got one eye on Team USA, one eye on the monitor. So, Dom Capers... We're going to talk about him. We're going to get to know who potentially might be the next Broncos head coach for at least a couple of weeks of the season. And we're also going to talk a while about why Jero Evero, the DC, is unlikely to get promoted. And it's not because he's not doing a good job, but because it's the Broncos playing chess, not checkers. But Don Capers is by far the most well-tenured and experienced member of this Broncos coaching staff slash front office. He was the Texans head coach in the early 2000s. He was their first head coach. 2002 is when that uh, organization started. Then he was the Dolphins defensive coordinator after that. He spent a long time in Green Bay as their DC. And now he is the senior defensive assistant for the Broncos. He's had some other stints and stops along the way. But those three are the most notable stops of his career. Now before we talk about Evero and why he probably won't be promoted as interim head coach... If there were to be a midseason firing, BetUS, our proud sportsbook partner, is here for you guys. And if you want to put some money down on not just the Broncos, but the World Cup Team USA money line lock, hopefully that does not age poorly in the coming, uh, coming minutes or so. But head on over to chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Broncos125. When you use that link and you use that promo code, you're going to get a 125% deposit bonus. So make sure you check them out. Oh, we almost scored. Okay. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Broncos125. All right. Why not ever? Right? Why not promote the DC that's done a fantastic job that, frankly, has been the only bright spot of this entire new coaching staff? Here's why. If you, are, if you were to promote Evero to interim head coach, he is no longer your defensive coordinator, which means under contract, he's not a DC. So when this season is up, you have to make a decision. Do you want to promote, as, promote him as head coach? If not, he's not going to go back to DC. He will be hired somewhere else, and his time with the Broncos is over. If you were to keep him at defensive coordinator and promote Dom Capers to the interim head coach position, well, then you're going to hold him under his contract as DC. And the only way he's getting out of that is if, A, the new head coach for the Broncos fires him, which doesn't seem very likely given how great of a job he is doing, or B, some other team hires him as their head coach, which is a big gamble to make on a first-year coordinator. Definitely a bit premature. He's done a great job for this team, but I don't think he is ready to take on a head coaching job. And I don't think the Broncos are wanting to audition him to head coach for this position because my guess is the next head coach is not going to be a first-time head coach based on how poorly the last couple have been for the Broncos and most recently, the current head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. All right, should George Payton or should the Waltons ownership group fire Hackett midseason? There's a fair back and forth to be had on this question. Oh, I thought we were going to score. Because... This isn't college football, right? You don't need to start recruiting and get on the recruiting trail as soon as possible, like Auburn needs to do. But what does that tell your locker room? What does that tell your fan base? What does that tell your season ticket holders? When you're three and seven, you have all this talent and you are not doing anything with it. Let me know in the comment section, yes or no. Personally, I would fire him midseason. I think you have to send a message, not just to the team, that you're not going to accept these below average and below acceptable results, 
but to the entire fan base, the organization, the ownership, everyone involved, top to bottom, that we are not at the standard we are supposed to be at. And we're not going to just sit by and watch for the next month and a half to be the same results because what difference does it make if we fire him now or later? The difference is it's not a slap in the face to your fan base who, co who comes out and shows out and gets loud every third down, every incomplete pass. You're going to send them a message that you are not accepting the way this team has performed and you are making a change at the top. Appreciate all of you guys for tuning into today's show. Sorry for the scatterbrain. If you're watching the World Cup too, you can probably understand why. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to see you guys later with more Broncos news and rumors. Thank you.